hello hello everyone welcome back to Kentucky Garden Gal this is Nancy I am in South Central Kentucky in zone 7 it is June the 2nd and it is absolutely a beautiful day I have been just enjoying the garden all day and I thought let's just do the June garden tour today. Now the first thing that you're gonna see when we walk in, I cut down a cherry tree and then the cherry tree that was over here that had fallen over, I did finally get that up. So this has opened this up a lot more. This is gonna get a whole lot more sun, so I'm really happy about that. The fox gloves are just finishing up. There's one. But Leatris and Glads are coming up right behind them, and those are going to be really, really pretty. Now, this is my herb garden, and in the front, you see uh, tansy, there's tansy, there's oregano, and right back there are chives. I pick up these containers from Walmart, and these have probably been out here 10 years. But this is the easiest way I have found to grow herbs, any, especially anything that may spread. And then here is the asparagus that we started this year. So that's doing good. And we will, oh, these lilies. Let's go over here and look. The lilies are getting ready to open. Are they not beautiful? can't wait to see those and we'll say hello to the chickens see what they're up to what are you girls doing what are you girls doing they love their carrot tops so they're having a little snack and we'll go over and check these lilies are getting ready to bloom so since the last time that I did a video, I did, oops, there's my shadow, I did put in a trellis and I did jasmine. I planted jasmine right there. So I think that would be uh, really pretty and it's gonna smell so nice. But we'll look over here and give you an update. There's the three pawpaw trees, one, two, three. And then we'll go around this way, but we'll say hello to the bunnies first. Hello, Flopsy and Mopsy. This is Flopsy. This is Mopsy. And they, too, are enjoying carrots. So, this is the apple tree. When my friend Vicki, that watches the channel, hello, we love you, Vicki. She went through Master Gardener's class, and I think at the very end, they had to graft an apple tree. And you can see right there is the original graft, but she gifted me this apple tree and I'm telling you, it's just hanging full. So even though I had to cut down my cherry trees, uh, my apple tree is doing good. The, paw, the three pawpaw trees are doing good. I have an elderberry to plant, an American persimmon to plant. And then I have, two more fruit trees right here. This is, whoops, I just tore it off. This is an apricot, as you can see. I'll have to try to put that back on there. And then there is a plum. I can't really see it, but it's right there. So while we're back here, we'll just take a peek at everything. And one thing that I've really been enjoying, look at these hollyhocks. I also had foxglove back here, and the hollyhocks are just coming out as the foxglove are going in. These lilies are coming out, which I just think they're absolutely stunning. But look at these hydrangeas. Are these not gorgeous? And I'm afraid the camera really isn't doing justice to the blue. But aren't those beautiful? And then right beside it, the cone flowers, more lilies are blooming. This rose, this rose is just doing so well, so pretty. More lilies coming along. This is the double 
knockout roses that I planted last year. I believe I picked these up on clearance. And as you can tell, I staked this and then it's already fallen over and it looks like it broke right there. So I'll have to get a bigger stake, but these are so big, they fell over. Oh my goodness. And then we've got more echinacea or coneflower coming right in behind them. This is a dogwood that I planted new this year. This is the milkweed coming up. I want to have the milkweed for the monarch butterflies. And then over here, more daylilies that are getting ready to open. Another dogwood. Let's see, more knockout roses there. The clematis is finished, but I love what it leaves behind. Isn't that such an interesting texture? And I think that you need textures in your garden. But look at those two. That is another lily and then some pampas grass back there. But I like just the different colors of green. Here's a bellflower. More lilies over here. And we've got the cannas coming along over here. They'll be up soon. And then this is the back of the old koi pond and you can see we've got the banana trees there and all that this is pretty shady so i have things that love shade back here and like i said this was the koi pond that we filled in and uh, i've been struggling with it just trying to get different things to grow so we'll see how it does this year over here is our fig. That is coming along nicely. The crepe myrtles, those are starting to fill in. Now we're coming around to the back door. And what I wanted to show you around here, I have planted moonflowers. I planted moonflowers in this container and this container over here. And that will be enough that it will come up and just cover the walkway with moonflowers. But something we have to look forward to, look at our sweet peas. Our sweet peas are getting ready to bloom. And look at the hydrangea and the oak leaf hydrangea over there that is all newly planted. This is my first year of using the green stalk vertical growing towers. So this is the first one that I got and I planted this up as a salad bar. It has done excellent. We have not bought lettuce in probably a good month and plus I treat the bunnies. So this was my second one that I bought when they had them on sale for Mother's Day and this is planted with squash and tomatoes uh, there's some basil back here. There's some sage down there. So this is planted up just a little bit differently. But I have to tell you, so far, I am very, very impressed with these. You see the amount of room that they take up? Now this one is not on a set of rollers as this one is. And I did order the tops for mine, which keeps things, keeps trash out of your water reservoir. But all you have to do is open that and fill that up. And then it just equally distributes the water. Um, but so far, I really, really like these. Anybody that has limited space that wants to grow their own uh, food, just ideal. And just idea, it's right here by the kitchen door. So I can just come out and I can just harvest. But I also have, I put another one of these trellises up. And on this, I have got the birdhouse gourd seed planted. So hopefully pretty soon that'll sprout up and we will see uh, this just full of birdhouse gourds, hopefully by the next video. This is a new David Austin that I have planted, Bathsheba, 
and this is a dahlia that I bought the only one that made it so it looks like it's doing pretty good but this is just a really good example of a shade garden um, things that I need to thin out in my own garden are hostas lilies and irises I really have an overabundance of those so I'm going to be working this year on thinning these out but look at this snowball bush isn't that gorgeous right next to the Solomon seal that is so pretty the little ferns the hostas this is my night blooming cirrus it loves this spot uh, hanging in a tree under dapple shade always does really well right there and then this is another oak leaf hydrangea that I added back here so there's the oak leaf there's the snowball this is lily of the valley that blooms earlier and I don't know if you can see it I have this needs to be weeded so don't look at all of my weeds but this is a mouse ear hosta I've got one two three four five six seven eight I've got eight little mouse ear hostas that I need to come in and weed around but those are doing good these are knockouts that um, that hopefully will start blooming again and we're just walking down the side this is pretty shady I started some Dame's Rocket in the back in one of the containers and I'm gonna put that right here I started it um, with seed and it's done excellent it just needs to be transferred now but I'm gonna have this whole thing in Dame's Rocket so that will be happening over in this corner and this is more rose bushes that I planted this year. Irises. There is another rose bush. Like I told you with the daylilies, there are plenty. This is a new rose bush. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So when you are buying roses, one of the things that you want to look for is the petal count how many petals are in a bloom and the higher the petal count look at that I don't remember what that one was but it's just absolutely gorgeous this is one of those roses that I bought for ten dollars in the plastic bag at Walmart I was there the day that they set them out so I snagged six of them and so far, five have, have lived, one didn't make it, but that's okay. So, this is in the gazebo, which, as the sign says, this is my heavy place. And I love to sit out here. Um, I have a bridal veil out here, a gardenia that when it blooms, it smells just wonderful. So, these containers, of course, we have the ferns. I've done videos on those. But these containers are rendered over from last year. And I broke this rose off. Let our motorcycle go by. But I broke off this rose. And just it had a little root on it. So, I just stuck it in here. And then I noticed today when I was sitting here, that it has a bloom. So just so thrilled with that. But I've been adding, this has been the year of the roses. Last year, I really got excited about roses and I ordered some from Grace Rose. This is these and these are climbing. They will come up the gazebo. And then these will be right here in front. Just beautiful. And these two are the same kind two to go there. So this is just more greenery here. Hydrangeas that are getting ready to bloom. So those will be really pretty. Look at the snowball brush. Isn't that gorgeous? Look how pretty that is. And they don't stay this white color 
long enough for me. I think that they're just absolutely gorgeous. But I added two in the back. Here is a smaller one. This is the original one over here. And we walk over to this one. But we're gonna walk past some roses. Remember I told you I've been adding roses this year? Here's some more. Look at the petal counts. So this is the hydrangea from the front. We will walk up on the front porch, see what's going on up here. So I just have ferns. I brought my orchids out. I have the um, little fairy in the suitcase. People seem to always really love that. And it's just things that that I've collected and been gifted over the years. And um, just looking here, I like to add lamps on my front porch. Like this stays on all the time and it gives it just enough light that, um, I don't know, like you don't have to have the main porch light on, but you can, you can see. And I really like that. And then all of my cushions that you see when we're walking around looking at things, every one of these cushions I picked up thrifting. So those are definitely things. And I forgot to show you my birdhouse. We'll have to go back around the corner to, I wanna show you the birdhouse that I picked up for $8. It's just so pretty. But this garden has been here. These are burning bushes, they need to be trimmed. And then more hostas and sedum. But look at this. Hopefully I don't jump. I tell you what, is that not stunning? Is that not just stunning? Like when I pull in my own driveway, I pull in real slow so I can see this. Now they won't stay this color you know, for long, and I do need to come out and take some photos, but they start turning um, different colors. But I think the white stage is just so pretty. So this goes back into a little alcove that I made, and this is a Savannah Holly. If you watch my videos on a Four Season Garden, I always try to have evergreens because it gives you interest in the winter, but the, the birds love um, the berries on these and they're wonderful to decorate at Christmas. And then the Arboretavite fence right there, the living fence that I made. And these are Rosa Sharon. Friend gave them to me. Uh, a lilac, friend gave it to me, more Rosa Sharon. This is a little garden that I made, <clears throat> and again, these are the roses that will be climbing up, and this is, doesn't really show that well on camera, but it's a yellow and a pink, and I have one for each side. Unfortunately, the one in the back didn't make it. I need to order another one or possibly try to graft another one, but, um, these are the roses that I got from Grace Roses. And then the same thing over here. Look how pretty. Oh goodness. These are just gorgeous. But the irises, I had white irises in here and they were just absolutely stunning. The knockouts um, are coming back. But let me show you this. This is a David Austin planted this year. This is the poet's wife. Look at this one. This was um, a special. David Austin had three roses for maybe $100, something like that. And uh, so I was able to get that. And if I had it to do over, I would have ordered three sets. I would have gotten nine. But this is another David Austin rose. This is a climber that I've put in, and you can see a little new growth on this. 
So we should have some blooms on this before the year. And this is the Dolly Parton Rose Garden that I put in. And I have not gotten out here and covered this and mulched it. And I want you to look how well my weeds are growing. They are just amazingly growing weeds, I'm telling you. But look at the clematis. Isn't that gorgeous? That was on clearance, that one. And then this one over here. Those are doing well, and these have bloomed. These um, these knockouts should bloom through November. And then I did put, you can't see it for the weeds, but I've got three lavenders in here. And then I have been picking up these little lights. You'll see these throughout my garden. And if you go into, the Dollar Tree, when you go to the $5 section, that is where I'm finding those lights, and they work amazingly well for $5. This is a crepe myrtle. This is getting ready. I've got two up here that are getting ready to bloom. And then these are some glads that I put in here after the tulips bloomed. So these will die back. I'll probably put something in the center for fall. And then next spring, tulips will come back out again. And then over here, again, more roses. Don't currently have a bloom on these, but these, I want roses just coming up everywhere. And I tried to dress up my sidewalk just a little bit. I don't want the, I'll stay so the sun is behind me, but this is Leatris more of the little lanterns from the garden, uh, Dollar Tree, sedum, this is foxglove, these are Siberian irises, more lanterns, bellflowers, gay lilies, glads, and hostas. And the whole idea is when I'm looking out my front door, I want to see my sidewalk which is going to be replaced this year thank goodness but i want to see my sidewalk just full of flowers and it'll take a while you know with perennials it takes about three years before they are really at their fullest but let's go back and then look how pretty the magnolia tree is Let's go back quick and look at this birdhouse that I picked it up. I was at a Goodwill thrifting and ta-da! There it is. Isn't that the cutest little thing? It was eight dollars and just to have something to sit around. This is another jasmine that I bought. Those were ten dollars. But that is just something to sort of sit around and decorate. And um, this is just a little where we grill. So we've just got different flowers. And then if you're walking out this way, this is the path that you can go around into the kitchen, like if you're grilling or whatever. But look at the colors on this. Aren't those just fascinating? I tell you, I just love, love, love plants. And then you either can go in the back door, but if you walk out, this is the view that you see as you come out the back door. So this is my little garden in South Central Kentucky. And I appreciate all of you who have stayed till the end and watched the garden tour. And I hope you've enjoyed it. I will see you in the next video.